next speaker is Peter Cherche. Peter, while you are setting uh, your slides in place, um, uh, I'll briefly present you. Uh, so Peter is the head of center of the Center for IT and Infrastructure Support to Research at the, C the Science and Research Center COPER, as well as its research library. Uh, Peter is also the data officer of the EU-funded project on migrant children and communities in a transforming Europe, uh, also abbreviated with MyCreate. Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you for this presentation, Marike. I hope you, everybody hears me. Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> thank you. Well, some of the topics I wanted to, to tackle have already been, already been stressed out by, by Dimitra uh, previously, but it will, I think it will all uh, nicely set in. As uh, said before, I will try to give you a user user view to the data management expert guide or DMAG as, as uh, uh, shortly named. Uh, I am a, I'm a data man manager. Oops, sorry, something wrong. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm a data management manager at uh, MyCreate project, but first I would like to very briefly uh, introduce you to the institution where I work. It's a public research institute. Uh, with eight research groups uh, stretching from humanities over social sciences to, to biotechnology and natural sciences. So you can see it's, it's a quite a colorful uh, uh, family and you can already start imagining what, what does it mean in the terms of data management. Uh, I don't know whether uh, some of you have knowledge about what kind of data uh, are collected in, in, in all these this various uh, uh, scientific fields. It also has 11 infra infrastructural units. And we, the vast majority of work we do is within national and international research programs and projects. And as uh, said before, my role is head of the Center for IT and Infrastructure Support to Research and also head of the uh, research library. Uh, my current project, uh, MyCreate stands for Migrant Children and Communities in a Transforming Europe. Now, uh, this is one of our uh, EU projects. It's within Horizon 2020 uh, research program. Uh, and to put it short, it's strictly oriented in uh, um, migrating children and uh, child-centered, uh, uh, child-oriented uh, view to, to the, the issues that, that come from this. Uh, the consortium of the project uh, is made of 15 project partners from 12 different countries. You can see them on the map uh, below. And again, you can start imagining uh, the ways that we have to, uh, the ways we have to uh, go through to tackle the, the data management within all this. The leading partner is uh, my institution, ZSA, and should anybody be interested into more details about the outcomes project, project partners, there is a uh, internet uh, link added. Now, uh, I don't want to go into detail about the topics covered by the, the project, I just want to uh, emphasize again the thing that I said before, it's, uh, it's uh, aim is to stimulate the inclusion of diverse groups of migrant children by adopting child-centered approach to their integration at the edu educational and policy level. And uh, I just want to emphasize something that is really important for our project, it's child-centered approach, because uh, as I'm sure you know, uh, usually it's us grown-ups deciding about the children uh, while um, the research group, the, 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 the consortium wanted really to orient on, on what children think and, and uh, can say about, uh, about this uh, stressing point. Uh, the MyCreate was made part of the open research data pilot uh, at the uh, at the uh, starting phase, uh, I'm sure you are familiar with that. That that some uh, scheme that was uh, made up in in uh, Horizon 2020, and there are two main pillars of uh, these pilots. Um, one is developing a data management plan or DMP, and the other one is providing open access to research data if possible. Now. Um, uh, 
uh, as for the data, it's I think it's quite obvious that uh, we are dealing with lots of uh, of sensitive data since we're talking about uh, connection of two uh, two vulnerable groups of people, one being migrants and uh, the other being children, and those two mixed together make the things even more uh, more uh, challenging. Um, in open research data pilot uh, projects, data management plan, as said before, is obligatory deliverable uh, at, at the beginning of the, of the, the start of the project. And uh, the designated chapter of the grant agreement is uh, open access to research data, which means that we had to deal the data management policies uh, way before the, the actual project started, which I can say this, this now is quite obvious that it has to be done uh, in the, at the very beginning of the planning of the projects. And um, thankfully we have, we had even before quite a fruitful cooperation with the, uh, our National Social Sciences Archive, Data Archive, the, the ADP, and I would really like to use this opportunity to thank them again for all the, the, the advice they gave. They gave us in the preparatory phase and even nowadays. And they immediately pointed us to the, it says the data management expert guide or DMAC. Uh, nowadays, I can say it's an obvious choice in preparations of data management plans in, in social sciences, as well as providing open access to, to uh, research data. Uh, once we started working uh, on data management, after uh, experts of uh, ADP suggested, uh, we immediately saw that, uh, or even better, nowadays I can go, I can come back and say that it's uh, the data management expert guide is exactly what it says on its uh, first page, and what also Dimitra pointed out before. It's a uh, guide by a European, a vast uh, group of European experts to help social science researchers make uh, their data management. And it sort of guides you swiftly uh, through the entire uh, life cycle of, of uh, data within a, within a research. So I confirm the, the front page of uh, DMAG. Uh, the the other thing which is in itself quite obvious uh, dmac being a data management guide that it's quite well organized unlike the shelves in my office on the uh, photo on, on the other side it this is uh, the chapters within data management management expert guide once you go through through it you see this is the the uh, exact life cycle of data management and uh, the best way to tackle it is just uh, go with the flow just just click click all the chapters but on the other hand uh, it's huge once you start clicking you see there's a lot of stuff hidden behind so uh, you can either just uh, go to the specific chapter, but I really suggest that at least you take a short peek at, at uh, all the chapters within uh, within the DMAC. Uh, and uh, again, it's nothing but what it, sell, what it says. It's uh, real life experts advice on most issues, if not all, and a direct guide through the cycle of data management planning. Uh, one thing that is really great, there is a really large family of CESDA members behind the, this guide. Uh, and uh, according to my experience, really without exaggeration, I can say that all the experts uh, behind it are really eager to help out. You get direct connections to, to the real people behind the guide and they will... Uh, they are within your reach and you can get all the necessary uh, information directly from them. Uh, there is one thing that uh, I mentioned before and I really want to stress out once again the amount of information you get with clicking on, on the different chap chapters is, uh, 
is big. It can be intimidating, or at least it was for me. I have to say I'm not a social sciences researcher, so I, I don't have quite a lot of experience in that. So to me, it was a, a wow moment when I saw what, uh, what is hiding behind it. And this can be uh, very challenging if you, as a data management manager, confront a researcher that is already totally occupied with uh, research, has no time, and then he's, you, you point him to DMEG and he starts clicking and he just, you know, loses interest and he says, oh no, I'm not going to do this. But uh, stick to it, especially if you're dealing with migration, if you're dealing with uh, such big amounts of sensitive data uh, as, as we are, I really, nowadays, I. I don't see how would we be able to manage without the help of, of the DMEG. Now, uh, I will not go into, into detail because you really need to, to find out uh, by yourself what's, what's hiding in it. I would just like to point out two important chapters of the DMEG uh, in Consideration you have to take in consideration while working on uh, migration and working uh, on uh, sensitive data. One is within chapter four, subchapter security. This is a kind of a technical chapter that deals with um, how you handle the devices that you need for both uh, gathering information uh, during the field work, uh, storing the information. Uh, uh, archiving before giving information to, to data archive. A bit more technical, but uh, extremely helpful. Uh, but the, the really important issue is something that Dimitra already pointed out before, is chapter five, uh, chapter protect, which is uh, divided into various uh, sub-chapters. It's an excellent point, point of reference, uh, especially if, you, if you're working in a large project team like, like ours. Remember, 15 members from 12 different countries. So uh, it, would be, it would be difficult to decide about certain points uh, if you don't have a, 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 a common guide where you can always say, okay, let why don't we do it like the DMAC suggests? Or yes, this is a good starting point, but let let's move on from from here and do something else. So you can you know you can show to your partners uh, directly what what you have in mind, and and it's it's really it's really helpful. Uh, the other thing. The MEG itself emphasizes diversity in data protection. So uh, there are in, in the chapter of, of uh, uh, diverse, uh, processing personal data diversity in data protection, there are 13 different country cases. Uh, and as we all know, there is the EU GDPR regulation. And uh, on top of that, we have national specifics so uh, they are all pointed out uh, within within this guide. Uh, one thing that I also would like to point out is uh, all the chapters uh, end with the adapt your DMP, adapt your data management plan. So it's you know first it's a sort of a theory on uh, what to think about, but then in this adapt your DMP. Uh, you, it really leads you through one point to, to another, what you have to think about. Uh, it's not necessary that you use it, but, but it's, it, it's, it's like a reminder about what, what you need to do. Uh, Peter, as I said before... Yeah. One, one minute. Thanks, okay, thank Peter. you. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm closing in. Uh, what I said before, I'm not a social science researcher, so I'm not going into, into details uh, about the research itself. It's just, I wanted to point out, uh, there's a lot of field work and the vast majority of data collected is uh, qualitative data. Uh, it's uh, very sensitive data. I said before, highly vulnerable group uh, of, of people, mostly interviewees. 
children, migrants, uh, sometimes very small groups of people that can be traced uh, back if the data are not uh, handled in, in the correct manner. And as we all know, the open access to research data uh, in itself has the balance between as open as possible and as close as necessary. Now, in, in our case, this is, uh, uh, I think it, it leans towards uh, more closed than, than, than opened. Uh, I would uh, just like to point out also that the Micrate has uh, in itself an ethical board uh, that um, established standard ethical protocol and the longest chapter of this this protocol is uh, data protection and privacy uh, uh, such is the importance now uh, first we we thought that all the data will be gathered at one archive but now uh, we decided during the project going on we decided that every partner should deposit the data at their national says the data archive archive unfortunately the map of says the members does not overlap the map of of my partners but we're, we're getting along and this several uh, archives have many advantages in comparison to to single deposition it's uh, from language to national policies uh, communication within one nation is is uh, much easier and uh, if i finish off with quoting myself uh, and i use my a slide from one of the general assemblies uh, with this i think i said said it say it all i believe it says that ticks most if not all the boxes uh, during the data management uh, processing. I think they're the best in business. Uh, the large project teams can, uh, can profit from same standards, comparable metadata referencing, uh, referencing uh, which stands for fair use of data. And uh, um, this, is, this is what our team needs so that we not only can store archive our data at the different uh, uh, archives, but also afterwards be able to uh, reuse it uh, virtually from one point. And this is it from me. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.